Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for January 24th, 2012. I'm Joe Lynch. My guest tonight is the editor of Somerville Patch, an online news service here in Somerville. He's a former reporter for the South End News, Dover Sherborne Press, Alston Brighton Tab, and Bay Windows. His work has also appeared in Chicago's Inside and the BostonHerald.com. In the broadcast media world, he has worked for ABC News on 2020, Primetime Live, Good Morning America, and The Morning News. It is my pleasure to welcome for his first visit here at Greater Somerville, editor of Somerville Patch, Chris Orchard. Thank welcome. you. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled, welcome, welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. A Somerville, Somerville. A Somerville resident who doesn't have to travel far to Union Square. No, I come over from Teal Square and I've developed uh, a sort of rat route that I take. There, there it's a bit go. of a maze, but Tra it avoids uh, Powder House Road. Or Traversing right. all four miles right. from one end to the other. On the, on the back streets. On the back streets, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've been here for a while now. This is, you're going into your second year? Um, here at, at in Somerville, in or? Somerville, in Somerville. Well, I first moved to Somerville in um, it was 2003 or 2004. Wow. I didn't realize that. Um, and um, I lived uh, over in Ward Two for yeah. most of that time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in 2007, moved to Switzerland for three and a half years, and came tax back. taxes too high here in Somerville. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. I went to Switzerland um, for a while. My uh, my wife. Landed a job there. Yeah. Uh, we were engaged at the time, but, there you go. Um, and uh, that was a wonderful opportunity. But we missed uh, Somerville and came back in 2010. So about a little over a year ago, a yep. year and a half ago. From Somerville to Switzerland and back. Exactly. There is a story for Somerville Patch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, welcome. Thank I told you, you before we started. Um, I do have a public service announcement that I promised somebody I would read. So with your kind indulgence, please, I'm going please. to do it. Um, many of you know that the Somerville Youth Development and Boxing Club uh, has a new location, and they are doing a fundraiser on Friday, January 27th. That's this coming Friday, from noon till 8 p.m. In conjunction with, let me see if I got this right, uh, Lincoln Tech which is the technical school uh, for development down at Assembly Square. They have experienced certified alumni of Lincoln Tech who are doing uh, mass a massage clinic at the Assembly Square campus. And that will be on Friday, January 27, 2012, from noon till 8. All proceeds from the massage clinic will go to the Somerville Youth Development and Boxing Club, and we here at Greater Somerville are pleased to announce that um, no members of the Board of Aldermen will be giving deep body massages. So <laughs> these are only licensed right. people from Lincoln Tech that will be doing it. Again, a worthy cause. I would advise you to go down, get rid of the winter doldrums, get yourself a nice massage. They do a full body massage, deep tissue massage, and hot rock massage. So get down there on Friday. Right, and it's not at all like the Lowell Street uh, Let's hope massage not. Let's uh, hope parlor. Not. Um, Chris, of course, is referring to our friends uh, at the corner of Highland Avenue and Lowell Street who uh, opened up a massage parlor. I've done that before on <laughs> the show and people right. kind of enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so I, I would just hope that our friends in uh, government here and law enforcement keep an eye on that, I, that location. I think they're on top of it. There you go. So from, Switz from, from Somerville to Switzerland and back, but before that, you worked a lot in uh, media. Right, well, um, in fact, in college, um, I went to college up in Vermont. I yep. was uh, news director of the radio station up there, uh, Middlebury College. Middlebury, two um, nieces. Oh, really? Two nieces Wonderful. graduated Middlebury. Wonderful. Yep. Um, and uh, so... I think they spent most of their time at the Snow Bowl, though, but... <laughs> I spent a little bit of t I spent a little bit of time. Uh, there's good skiing up in in, in Vermont. There so, sure is. Um, but um, right, so I did some uh, some news for the college radio station when I was there, and uh, so when I graduated, that led into a job at uh, ABC News down yep. in New York. Terrific. Uh, sort of started out as a low man on the totem pole there. Um, a, de a desk assistant, they called us. Unless Dad owned the radio, st <laughs> the television station, right. that's where you were going to start. Right. Um, but it, I mean, that was a great experience. I, I was right there, um, 
in the newsroom. Uh, I was working the night, the night shift, uh, but occasionally would run into uh, uh, Peter Jennings and all the, cool. all the big wigs uh, down at ABC News at the time, yeah. um, running scripts around and sort of uh, finding footage and uh, doing research and, and uh, all, all sorts of but work. Working great, with right. a lot of the major players on right, 2020, right. Primetime Live, yeah. Right. I ultimately moved from the night shift in the, in the newsroom onto the new, what they call it the news magazine side, mm -hmm. the long, they call it long form, uh, sure. longer form, I guess you'd say, uh, television news production. And uh, so, right, I was helping produce, um, again, pretty low man on the totem pole, but helping produce uh, segments for 2020, primetime live, and there was a, a show back then called 2020 Downtown, which some of you <laughs> I see may not remember, but it was... Kahonas? Uh, yep, yes, I believe. I, uh, <laughs> ding, that's ding, good ding, I recall. get a prize for good, tonight. Good recall. There but, you uh, go. So I was doing some work for that uh, show as well. Um, Very good. So, you, so media, you're no stranger. You're no stranger, but you went into uh, what we refer as the new the news print media. Right. But you're not really print. Somerville Patch is not print at Somerville all. Somerville is not. We're not the press. I right. can't say we're right. the press. We're the media. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, certainly I enjoyed uh, writing, and as much as I enjoyed my time at ABC News, um, uh, I, I wanted to get into uh, more on the ground reporting and on the ground uh, writing. Uh, and so I ultimately landed some freelance gigs, if you will, at, as you mentioned, um, Alston Brighton Tab, Dover Sherburn Press. I covered uh, town government out in Dover and Sherburn for some time, mm -hmm. um, and ultimately landed at South End News in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, Great paper. My old down, haunts, yep. down at the South End. And, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, it's owned by a company uh, called Bay Windows. Mm -hmm. They're uh, the biggest um, LGBT newspaper in New England, yep. I believe. At, yeah. least, at least they were when, yeah. when I was there. And, uh, uh, and it, was just a great, it was just a great time. And um, nothing bad to say about working in, in, in a big, big new net television news network, but I really do feel you, you learn more about journalism uh, spending three or four months on the ground as a reporter. Well, you have many, many hats in the local arena. Right. It's, yeah. it's a different. It's a different ball game. It's yeah. a different ball yeah. game. And then you wind up going to in 2010. I think was the launch of the Patch kind of network, wasn't it? I bl uh, well, P Patch launched as three. There were three original Patch sites. Okay. And I believe that was 2009. I believe. Uh, and uh, I think I think it was down in in New Jersey and maybe Connecticut, okay. that sort of area. Mm -hmm. And now Patch is over uh, 860 uh, sites across the country. Yep. Uh, most recently, they were covering uh, the New Hampshire primaries and uh, South Carolina uh, primaries. What have uh, we got locally, Chris? We have a uh, Somerville Patch. To, does Cambridge have its own? Or? Cambridge does not have a patch it at doesn't? the moment. Okay. No, um, but Boston. Boston has a number of patches. Okay. Um, different neighborhood neighbors. specific. There's a Beacon Hill patch. Okay. There's a there's a Charlestown patch. Uh, it's you know bordering Somerville. Yep. Uh, there's a Medford patch, uh, Arlington patch, uh, Watertown patch. Uh, so not uh, unlike the days when small local community newspapers started, every community had their own local newspaper. So patch is really the electronic version of that. In many yeah, it, it's. They call it hyper local, hyper -local. and so each. Yep. So um, although there are a number of different patch sites, um, each site is run by is is very much independent and very very local and mm -hmm. and very much committed to um, that individual town or community. Right. Uh, right. So we are. I am. You know, from Somerville Patch, and uh, if you go to Medford, they're covering Medford government and and Medford uh, events and and and. Uh, businesses in Medford and, and uh. so with no offense to our good friends at the Boston Globe um, the Globe seems to have a reporter covering multiple locales so you may get a reporter running from Medford to Somerville and back to Everett or up to Malden where on yours it's very specific you're not covering anything in Everett you're covering everything right here in Somerville exactly if there's a Somerville angle 
right. with something in Everett, then perhaps I will sure. cover it. But sure. um, uh, it's, it's a different it's a different model, and um, you know the Globe has very very capable reporters doing what they do. And, we're uh, not going to say anything back because no, they've been no. on this show. Oh too, no, so. not about <laughs> it. And and, and, uh, and it's just a, it's a different. It's a different animal. Many, it's a different type ways. of right. news service. Right. right. That's what it is. Um, yeah. And, and it's and it's not you know it is it is a news service, but we're also um, we're we're also a place you can go to learn about events happening in Somerville. Yep. Or calendar or, sites. Or, and, right. Or or yeah. places in Somerville like um, businesses, uh, business listings, or parks, for instance. Right. Uh, or or nonprofit organizations. Um, and it's it's also a place where where we we encourage people to interact and engage with the site, and, exchange uh, of information, exchange information, exchange views, um, uh, upload photos of themselves at the at the Patriots game, for instance. Sure. I, I think I got a comment on the site today that someone uh, someone some lucky person here in Somerville is headed to the the big game. Uh, so uh, you know, you know we, we want to hear about that. We want to hear about that on the site. Uh, uh, we can talk all we want about <laughs> lucky people. I'm going to talk about somebody who, a, a very good friend of mine, who flew back in from Vegas on Saturday, and I happened to be um, dog sitting their dog. The husband flew back in from Vegas and came to my house to pick up the dog, and said, "Geez, you know." I'm kind of thinking I probably should not have foregone those Patriots tickets for tomorrow. One of his clients had called him while he was in Vegas wow. and said, I've got four. Wow. He didn't know if he was going to make it back on Saturday or Sunday, so he declined the tickets. I said, what wow. is wrong with you? I, it, it saved him a heart attack, as, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it did. It did. And I'll echo what I've heard since Sunday. I can't believe he missed the kick. I, 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 I still can't believe the kick. No, nope. to be honest, nope. I, um, you know, normally I'd be jumping up and down and, and, and screaming, but I was I was dumbfounded. I was I was speechless when whatever, that happened. Whatever our sports fans are thinking out there, a win is a win is a win. Yeah. So totally. let's get behind them, and it's on to it's uh, two weeks, two weeks. Right, the yeah. first first Sunday in February. There you go. I believe. Um, and Patch is going to cover it. Well, you all know, expenses paid down to, <laughs> out to Indy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd love that. Would be wonderful. Um, <laughs> Good <laughs> maybe, luck with I, that. maybe I can put in an expense report for for that trip. Yeah. Good luck but, with that, uh, Chris. But you know, we'd love to cover it here. The the, the, the Somerville angle. There are wonderful fans here, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, part of me wonders if people are dressing up their dogs in Patriots gear. There you go. If you got a Patriot got story, some, contact Chris. Yeah. If you've got a Patriot story. Let us know. There you go. I, um, it, I told you we should probably give you your contact information a couple of times when sure, we're on the show. Sure, sure. Yeah. We're also going to have it on uh, Greater Somerville's website, so Chris will give it to you now, but you can also go back and look at ours. So you can be contacted at? Sure. Um, email me at chris.orchard at patch.com or call me at 617-306-6164. And if you visit somerville.patch.com, well, first of all, you can see the website. There you go. And uh, my information is there too. So yeah. we're 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 accessible. We're very. Ex you know I'm, how I'm accessible. You know how we do it here. Google Somerville <laughs> Patch. Then you'll that get all, your that, contact That also works. That there also works. Goes. There you go. But the patch, I see. Uh, you know, I see you uh, when I do watch the Alderman's meeting. You cover cover government. Mm -hmm. We cover a lot we with yes. government um, all throughout the uh, campaign season this year. This was our our meeting of the minds, right. our first contact. Um, some of you may remember and you may recognize Chris. He did participate in the media panel for the 2011 Alderman at Large debate at the Somerville Theater. It was a great time. Yeah, great time. And somebody, somebody. I don't know if I took it as a compliment or a snide remark, but somebody said, "Leave it to Lynch, who could get all four media." Uh, media organization sitting on the same stage. So it was the Somerville Patch, Somerville Journal, Boston Globe, Somerville News. Correct, right, yeah. right. Um, it, it was a great time. I think um, I know on the site there was a lot of interest in, in uh, I, well, for instance, I, I linked to, to, to the to the video of that debate. Right. There was interest right. in that and, and also just interest in, in the um, election. 
in November. So yeah, there were some was, hot little elections that yeah. were covered by all four. I mean, the, you know, Patch did a great job covering um, all the candidates that would respond to your phone calls. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, and uh, I mean, I think one of the most sort of old news, I guess, but one of the most interesting races was in Ward Seven, which is my my home ward. Yep. Uh, yeah. And so that was kind of a. Fun to see that hotly up, contested in my own neighborhood. Hotly, hotly contested, hotly contested. right down to the wire. Exactly. Um, Ward four was an interesting one because it was an open seat. Right. So those, I think, those two generated a lot of interest. And uh, this is the first time in many, many years that we've heard we've had more than one at-large challenger for the four incumbents. So that cha that generated a lot of right. chatter and a lot of people getting involved in the campaigns this year. Yeah, and a high caliber, I think, generally speaking, a high caliber uh, group. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, and I hope, and I think I'm right, that <laughs> Somerville is out of that whole dirty political politics kind of thing. That I think that hopefully is gone <laughs> forever. But you and I were talking before the show about a movie that I recommended to you about right. politics. It's called, um, and I have no interest in it, so I don't care, but uh, it was called The Ides of March. And The Ides of March is a terrific political movie. If you want to see how the big boys play, I mean, this is a great movie. I'm not going to give it away because <laughs> right. I know you haven't I seen haven't it I haven't seen yet. it. It's on my list. There you go. But back into Somerville Patch. Sure, sure. You, are, um, you cover the local scene in what you would describe, you've described as hyper-local. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's the difference, though, Chris, when we get to different age groups? I know that you probably look at the demographics of people who read Patch versus people who may still subscribe to the older print version of our local papers. Do you have any sense of what your general readership is? Well, I actually don't spend a lot of time looking at those demographics, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I'm more concerned with just creating a, trying to create a site that's useful to people here in Somerville and and uh, uh, no, they cover, don't covers different different events and different bits of news and different happenings in town. And, and they don't call this the hot set for nothing, but how do you measure that? How do you know that you're responding to what the readers want? That you're giving them the types of news stories that they want? Um, well, I mean, there's editorial discretion on my part yep. um, so I I decide in many ways if I think a story uh, needs to be featured on the site or, or how it should be featured on the site and and again we try to be we try to be very uh, open and accessible and, and inclusive of what's happening. It's, n um, it's not really a trick question because I've asked other media folks yeah, who have been yeah. on here before and I face the same thing. I mean how do I judge whether or not you know, a guest is interesting to the people who watch at home right. or the people who watch, you know, on, on my website. And the only tool that I have, because believe it or not, you know, people think just because we're on television, I can measure how many television viewers there are. There are not. The, the Nielsen's don't come well, in. The uh, Nielsen's are not part right. of cable. Right. So we, we have no idea how many people actually watch this. Right. We can judge based on man in the street information that comes to us. Somebody stops me at Market Basket and says, geez, I watched that interview you did with Joe Curtitoni or with Chris Orchard or, you know, that's anecdotal that you get. We also can measure on our site. Kyanne Anderson, who is a co-host here on the show, you know, she periodically looks at how many people are watching the shows. Right, so right. I'm just interested, you know, in a, a news service like yours, you can tell the same thing. How many people have come to your site on a specific day over a month and you roll those numbers up. But I guess it's really difficult for people like you and the media and any of the media folks to judge, are you delivering what the community really wants? Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, and again, I hate to repeat myself, but I, I, I mean, we, we, we are able to look at some of those numbers, and but uh, uh, at least at Somerville Patch, and I can only speak for Somerville Patch, It's it's not driven by numbers, it's driven by what I think is important, what's happening in, in Somerville. Um, and, uh, and so I, I can say, for instance, that um, breaking news tends to be something that, um, in my experience, 
people enjoy on on the site. They want to know. Well, yeah. if there's a big fire or yeah. a big a big accident, um, people want to know what's happening as quickly as possible. Sure, and, they want and, a traffic update, right. or they want to know, you know, right. What's happening in the community around them? Right, yeah. and so that, I mean that's some that's something where we're being online. We're we're really able to be responsive. Uh, and those are one quick hit story kind of things, and then you have the ongoing things. I mean, you've I've seen you up at City Hall. You know, you kind of follow what's happening within the government. The 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 most recent was the firefighters contract. Sure, you know Big where there was a to do back and forth between right. the city and and the firefighters union. Um, what are some of the other stories that you covered over the last week that seem to be getting hit a lot of hits? Well, and, and also, uh, I should say part of how I judge uh, the excitement about a story is if people are commenting on it and, and sort sure. of interacting. I know one um, a story. I would say the the big story today is is news of, of repair work that needs to get done at the high school. Oh yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you've seen this. I think the city has I has subscribe posted. to everybody's right. news. Right, right. Where do you think I get my <laughs> stuff? I get it from well, all you're, four you're, of you're you. You're plugged in. You're plugged in. But um, uh, a, a, a study, an engineering study has come out and uh, it has said that there's nearly 10 million dollars worth of repair work to the Somerville High School. Uh, that yeah. needs to needs to be done to to the Somerville High School. Um, with, and that's within a, a, a pretty tight time frame, I think the next four years. Um, you know, there's about $500,000 worth of repair work necessary almost immediately. Kind of safety, uh, immediate critical safety Right, stuff, and yeah. then a big chunk, don't, uh, go to Somerville Patch for the numbers, but <laughs> don't quote me on these numbers. Shameless but, uh, plug <laughs> right, right there. Um, uh, another 6.5 million on top of that that needs to uh, of work and repair work and replacements that need to be complete a lot of this uh, uh, my understanding from all the stories i read this is all exterior work mo well the report yeah. m dealt mostly with exterior work um and that's you know that 6.5 million on top of it is in the next two years and then another two and a half million i think in the next within four years so it raises the inevitable question that the mayor has raised since the day he was inaugurated is should we be thinking about building a new high school? Right. Yep. And that's what uh, he has said, at least in a in a in a statement that he released. Um, and I think the reasoning there is if, if there's a, if there's some so much money that needs to get pumped into this building, um, at least it's worth studying. At least it's worth looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know what it would cost to build a, a new facility. Yeah. Um, and there, you know, there's certain cost benefit. Yeah. Um, there's a cost benefit analysis that the city will have to do. Yeah, I think what's going to happen, though, I mean, the Somerville voters are smarter than the politicians in this city. That's always been my opinion. <laughs> right. Okay. And they're going to look at it and they're going to say, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If you need ten million dollars right away because the, si the because the exterior of the building or the roof and the windows have to be repaired, that's something you're going to have to do anyway. Right. You're not going to use that as an excuse to bond a hundred million dollars for a brand new high school. Perhaps that happens to have a football field attached to it. No offense, Mayor, but you know that that kind of argument has been put forth right. before, right? And it leads to the next question. And I saw some of the commenters on many sites across the city is that why would we not just put the money into the existing building? But that raises a whole host of issues for the city in terms of what do you do with the students during the renovation of the existing right. site? So, oh. well, I, I, you know, again, I, I, we had one comment on the site today from someone who was apparently a teacher at Somerville High School saying there's a lot of um, repair work that needs to be done in inside the building the too. The interior as well. The interior yeah. as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, I think I think that in the recent engineering report doesn't really deal with the interior yeah. but that's another thing um, that well, that's they'll a, be looking at. That's another good reason for the folks at home to watch the, you know what the ongoing stories here on Somerville Patch about whether or not the mayor's going to get his way and build a new high school or um, in my opinion, <laughs> not Chris Orchard's opinion, in my opinion, cooler heads will prevail. I, I have no opinion on the subject, but... Um, there's another hot issue that you guys were covering, which was the charter school, while we're on the education sure, part. Sure. The charter school debate about whether or not Somerville needs a new new charter school. How are the readers coming down on that? Uh, you know, again, without 
without pr saying my own opinion, I don't yeah. really have an opinion on the matter, but um, uh, for the most part... No, no kids yet. <laughs> I do not have There kids. you go. <laughs> um, uh, some friends, though. Some friends, yeah, oh, yeah. some friends do. But um, it has been overwhelmingly, I would say, I would say overwhelmingly um, opposed to the charter school. Yeah. Uh, at yeah, least the, 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 in, the interaction that's been yeah. on the site and, and some emails I've received and just speaking to some people about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, here on this, on this show, we try to present both sides. And, you know, if the folks who are proponents of the new charter school want to come on, they're certainly welcome. We've had Superintendent Parentazzi on the show. He's talked about, you know, the Somerville Public Schools. We've had Jed Lippert, who is the... Uh, head of school over at Prospect Hill Academy talking about the benefits of charter schools. Right. So, and I think those are the things that, you know, the services that the media, the legitimate media in this city, I, I think those are the services that we provide. Right. Um, and, and certainly on the site we did, um, we did uh, a, a question and answer um, profile, if you will, with, yeah. with um, a supporter of the charter school. And, uh, you know that's a, that's important to, to air both sides, both sides. and yeah. um, you know here here when you're covering something uh, uh, locally, um, you know these these people are your your neighbors and, mm -hmm. and your and your friends are friends of friends. So it's important to to let um, everyone have their say, and 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 so we encur we encourage that on the site. Back into politics for a minute. Would you say Somerville Patch is a Democratic site or a Republican site? I. Think it's pretty, um, pretty middle of the road. I I know um, it. One of our part of our philosophy is to be very open about any potential bias we have. That's kind of unenrolled. That's kind of, well. I am I am unenrolled. I am an unenrolled. There you go. Um, that, you're, one, you're one of the forty something percent in this city who are is, now unenrolled. I I was at the election office uh, for a quick visit just uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, and and it is an incredible number of yeah. unenrolled. Yeah. Um, this city at people. one time, Chris, I think it was almost um, ninety two percent, ninety one or ninety two percent enrolled in the Democratic Party. Wow. Wow. Right. So. I, I don't know if the Democrats are doing something wrong, but you know, a lot more people are independent-minded these days, and they don't want to be affiliated with the parties and told who to vote for. Right. I, I suspect a lot of those unenrolls lean left. Um, yeah, and, I think and, they and, are uh, center or left. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I know, as, as I was saying on the site, we're very open about that. And if, if you go to my, there's a biography, a, a, a short description of. Of, 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 I guess you'd call it a biography, and that's one of the questions they ask. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your politics? And yeah. you know, and what I've said is I've, I'm, uh, I consider myself an independent who leans, who, who leans a bit left. My politics are local, and they always have. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, we're going to run short of time, but I want to sure. thank you for coming in and extend the invitation to come back anytime. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Good to see you. My guest tonight Appreciate has it. been Chris Orchard from Somerville Patch. Um, don't forget this Thursday night to watch SCAT TV, our annual meeting and awards night hosted by yours truly. We'll be on um, at 7, 7 o'clock down here at live from the SCAT studios. Uh, for Greater Somerville, I'm Joe Lynch. As always, stay safe and stay informed.